Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And before we start this video today, I want to say thank you to Logan, who became the most recent member here on the YouTube channel. He now holds the rank of a team captain. If you guys are also interested in becoming a member here on the YouTube channel, well, you can click the blue join button that is right next to the subscribe button there on this video. I will also have a link in the comment section below that you can click on, or if you click on the join button, it'll bring up all the tiers that you can choose from, the perks that you get, depending on which tier that you choose. And it would just be, uh, you know, stuff like that. So click on that if you want. The support would be greatly greatly appreciated. But let's get to the topic at hand, which is the question, should the Tampa Bay Buccaneers potentially sign Clay Matthews to a contract? And you know what? Yeah, this is a little bit of recency bias based on what I saw in the New Orleans Saints game in week nine. But I really think that you don't even have to go with that much recency bias to talk about this question or to really ask this question. So I'm just going to drop some stats on you guys to start off this video. So firstly, did you guys know that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are actually first in the NFL with blitzes? They have blitzed 142 times in nine games. Uh, the second most team right now is 135, the Baltimore Ravens. Now, they've only played in eight games compared to the Buccaneers nine. That is an important thing to keep a note on. And yes, the Buccaneers are second in the NFL in sacks right now with 29. The Pittsburgh Steelers, I believe, have 32. They've also only played in eight games, and they've also only blitzed 116 times in eight games compared to the Buccaneers 142 times. So unless the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to blitz, you know, 30 or 40 times here during the Buccaneers bye week, I don't think that they're going to reach that number here anytime soon compared to the Bucs. So overall, as it stands, the Buccaneers are blitzing a ton. Yes, they are getting some pretty decent sack numbers, but I think that a lot of you guys have seen this as well, uh, just in my observations of every game that I've seen so far this year, when the Buccaneers aren't blitzing, aside from a handful of times, uh, they really haven't had a ton of success getting a pass rush going whenever they aren't blitzing. I mean, Devin White has five sacks. I believe Shaq Barrett has uh, four sacks. Sue has four sacks. Uh, and then Jason Pierre-Paul has uh, six and a half sacks, I believe. But aside from that, there hasn't been a ton of guys getting a ton of big sack numbers or really even pressure on the quarterback for that matter uh, when they need to. So that's kind of the first thing I wanted to address is kind of talk about where this team is in terms of their pass rush and why they are having some successes because they are blitzing the hell out of everybody. But when they aren't blitzing, it seems like they have struggled a little bit to find a rhythm, to find a consistent success in their overall pass rush when it's just kind of, you know, a handful of their guys from their front seven, be it three guys, four guys pass rushing. They aren't getting that much success and really pressuring the quarterback a ton. I think a big reason because of that could be because Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaq Barrett are playing a ton of snaps this year. Right now, as it stands, Jason Pierre-Paul has played 88% of the defensive snaps so far this year in the entirety of these nine games. Shaq Barrett has played 83.87%. And in terms of overall rotational guys, there really isn't another guy besides Anthony Nelson. And Anthony Nelson's played in 24 0.54% of defensive snaps so far this year, which isn't bad. You know, that means that he's at least a pretty, you know, usable rotational type of guy. But after that, in terms of outside pass rushing linebackers, there has been nobody on the entire list, guys. The only other guy that I see who is listed as a linebacker, and I would know, you know, depending on, you know, who's an outside linebacker, who's a defensive end, things like that. Cam Gill, who has played 2.18% of the defensive snaps so far for the Buccaneers this season. That is it. So Jason Pierre-Paul is number one for outside pass rushing linebackers on defensive snaps. Shaq Barrett isn't that far behind him. And then you get an insane drop down to Anthony Nelson, and then everything else is non-existent. So I think that in terms of overall depth, Clay Matthews could be a big help here. I think that he would be a very solid rotational piece. I think he would be that third outside linebacker, um, you know, 
kind of jumping ahead of Anthony Nelson there right off the bat. And I like Anthony Nelson. I think that Anthony Nelson is a very good pass rusher. They, he does deserve more playing time, in my opinion. But Clay Matthews has been a pass rusher for like 12 years in the NFL right now. And I think that he would kind of just merit more playing time over second year guy Anthony Nelson, who we haven't seen a ton of. I thought that he did some good things last year before he got hurt. Um, and I do think he has a bright future ahead of him. But Clay Matthews is Clay Matthews. I think he should get a little bit more playing time just because of the fact that he is a veteran. He can do, um, you know, it'd be a little bit more savvy with his pass rush to be a little bit more versatile things like that and I think that in terms of helping out with depth and helping out with rotational guys we saw it last year with guys like Carl Nassib among a couple of other guys like it can help with the overall efficiency in this Buccaneers outside linebacker group and and help out a ton with just you know keeping guys fresh making sure that they're in there ready to go and we've seen it from other position groups um, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this season the wide receiver room the running back room the secondary you know there's rotation pretty much everywhere except for the outside linebackers it's, it's very confusing to me but I feel like Clay Matthews could be a big help there and before I get the comments saying that Clay Matthews is washed up and he's past his prime things like that Clay Matthews had eight sacks last year for the Los, uh, Los Angeles Rams. That's not that bad in my opinion. I really feel like Clay Matthews in a rotational role could be a very efficient pass rusher. I feel like you could do a lot worse in terms of depth than Clay Matthews in year 12 or year 13 or, or whatever year he's in. I mean, eight sacks last year, only starting 13 games is not bad. I would take that every single day of the week uh, if he's in a rotational type role. And another thing that I think could be beneficial here to this move is that it will help against good teams like the Saints by having continuously rotating pass rushers, keeping guys fresh. We saw Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaq Barrett out there uh, just get really frustrated, you know, and, and the Buccaneers have played some good offensive lines, the Saints twice, the Packers they played. I, I feel like they did a better job against the Packers than against the Saints, but against teams like the Saints, whenever you're having just this insanely great offensive line keeping guys rotating in and keeping guys fresh is going to be huge because those offensive linemen ain't rotating out but if you have another solid depth guy that you can rotate in uh it'll just help keep everybody fresher and more efficient with their pass rush i really can't say that enough but um, in terms of helping out with other things, if there's an injury, if Jason Pierre-Paul goes down, Shaq Barrett goes down, knock on wood for that. Even if Anthony Nelson sustains another injury like he did last year, Clay Matthews would just be an automatic plug-and-play rotational guy in a situation like that as well. I, I really do feel like there are a lot of benefits. Clay Matthews also does bring some versatility. He can play outside linebacker. He can play inside linebacker. He did it last year with the Rams, and he could be a pretty darn cheap option. You know, Mike Greenberg with the Buccaneers. He is Jason Light's right-hand man, does not get enough credit. That man is an absolute wizard with contracts. It's insane that he hasn't uh, basically been signed away as a general manager yet. He is phenomenal. He, he really is phenomenal in terms of uh, making the money work and helping out as much as possible in terms of uh, renegotiating contracts, negotiating contracts, like you name it, Mike Greenberg is pretty darn good at it in terms of negotiations and contract structurings and things like that. They just got Antonio Brown on a really good deal. They got Leonard Fournette and LaShawn McCoy on some really good deals. And there is that added, you know, point of being able to play with Tom Brady. I believe um, in the Pat McAfee show, basically right when the season was started or right after they signed Tom Brady, something along those lines, they asked Clay Matthews if he was interested in playing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he said, you know, hey, we'll see. So I think that Clay Matthews would be interested. I think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers should be interested. I think they even asked asked Bruce Arians about that and he had basically said well if there's an injury or things like that then yes we would heavily consider signing Clay Matthews but I think if there isn't even an injury the Buccaneers should consider signing Clay Matthews just because of the depth that he can offer another veteran leader guy who has won a Super Bowl he's been there before it can help out with teams like the New Orleans Saints the Green Bay Packers the Kansas City Chiefs that they're playing here very soon these teams that have really good offensive lines um, making sure that you have as many solid veteran 
veteran pass rushers as possible who can stay fresh and stay efficient is very key to the overall success whenever you're not blitzing, in my opinion. So uh, I feel like there's so many positive reasons for Clay Matthews to sign with this team. He's versatile. He's efficient. Uh, he's not washed up, in my opinion, especially if you're only having him in a limited rotational type role. Uh, he, he'd be a great depth signing. I really do think that 100% him, Jason Pierre, Paul, you know, Shaq Barrett, you know, those two is the starters. Then you rotate in Clay Matthews. Then you rotate in Anthony Nelson, I think would be huge. And I think that we would start to see a pass rush, much like what we saw last year when, uh, you know, Carl Nassau was doing some great things. Shaq Barrett was doing some great things. Jason Pierre, Paul, when he came back was doing some great things. I think we could see that replicated again if Clay Matthews gets in there. And, and that's not to say that, you know, Shaq Barrett, Jason Pierre, Paul, they're having a bad year. I think that they are having a very good year so far. Six and a half sacks from JPP, four sacks from Shaq Barrett. Those are good numbers through nine games, but it could be better if you make an addition like Clay Matthews to your team. But guys, let me know your thoughts about all this down in the comment section below. What do you think about the Buccaneers potentially adding Clay Matthews to the team? Do you think it should happen? Do you think it shouldn't happen? Give me your reasons for one way or the other down in the comment section below. And again, Thank you to Logan for becoming a team captain member here on the channel. Again, if you guys are interested in becoming a member here on the channel, go ahead and click that blue join button that is right next to the subscribe button or click the link that I have down in the comments section below. But guys, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now and go Bucks.